Let's start. Let's start. Let's start. Well, I was uh, playing a gig, and um, I was at a folk club, and Susie was sitting right in front of the stage, beaming and bouncing up and down the whole time because she's really into fiddle music and she loves music. And then um, she sort of parked herself in my path at the end of the uh, evening and snagged me for fiddle lessons, I should add. And I became her fiddle teacher, and and she was a hard worker and, and loved loved music and. and we just were on that basis for, for quite some time, but it became obvious that we had more to say to each other, and, uh, and uh, when I saw her apartment, I, then I was thoroughly smitten. Every time he plays something, it sounds great, fine, okay, it starts great. And then he adds some other part right on top of it. And I say, enough, that sounds fantastic. And then he adds a whole other part. It's something like him looking at my painting and he says, okay, that's great, why don't you leave it that way? But then I have to go further. So he always did, he goes over the edge. He goes right to the edge and a little bit over. And you have to admire that. It's a total creative process. One thing I always noticed when I was playing the subway was that people would come up to me and say, uh, and say I love fiddle music. It's it's something, my grandfather had a fiddle, and or my uncle played fiddle, or something like this, and I was always amazed how many people from, it seemed, every walk of life had a fiddler somewhere in the family. Lately, my paintings involve a lot of musicians and music, because that's what I'm into right now. And um, I'm working on this painting, and working on it means that I started drawing it out a couple years ago. And it's up on the wall, and that's the two-year limit now. Now I have to reassess it and see if it's going to be painted. And it's a Cayley, which is an Irish dance. But I didn't know that's what it was, a picture of at first, because I'd never been to a Cayley. And I went to Montreal to this big Irish dance when I started to be interested in fiddle music. And I took all these photographs of all these people dancing and playing music. And I came home and decided to paint a painting based on it. And um, I drew this picture of a dancer. She was the first person that I drew out on this picture. I just loved the way she looked. And I didn't know her at all. Two years later, Oliver had this big party. And uh, I'm looking at this one girl, and she's looking at me. And I suddenly it clicked that I had painted her into my painting, that she was the main figure of this painting. I've never met her before, and now she was in my house. And so all these fates that, that intercross. And actually, Oliver wrote a song called Twist of Fate based on that whole experience. Oliver loves when I'm working. He loves when I've got a paintbrush in my hand or my arms full of paint or, or my elbows full of clay or whatever it is. It, it's inspiring to him, and because it is, it, then it becomes a real motivating force for me. Wow. How do they look? That's great. That, um, that orange solves a lot of problems there. Yeah, it makes her come forward yeah, a little bit. Yeah, because it was a little static in the back. Yeah. Wow. Now she's... Now, she really looks like she's bending over, you know? Yeah, and yeah. that couch separates them now uh -huh. from those... I love the guys, like, <laughs> That's great. She's very prolific, and, and her stuff is, um, is really varied. She does a sculpture, which is found object stuff, where her place is covered with, uh, with objects that she's collected, and objects begin to gravitate toward each other, and she's a bit of a, an object yenta, just bringing objects together and finding their mate and, and finding sometimes very curious couple of things go together make an unbelievable little statement about something there's one piece called urban geology and it's based on a core sample of our society and it's a good reflection of how I work with materials because actually it was all the junk in this apartment and some of the junk in other people's apartments that I put together it sort of symbolizes all the debris we throw away oh there it is El Camino presents football Tunes can come in many different ways. There's 
there are tunes that just pop into my head, and they're just like a little gift from above. It's just like, boom, there it is. Oh, where did that come from? And um, often when I'm walking down the street, I'll have manuscript paper with me in, an, in a briefcase, and, and I'm a constant frustration to my walking companions because I'll always say, uh, can you hold on a second? Then I'll get my paper out and I'll scribble stuff down. I've become very good at scribbling stuff down in the dark or as I'm walking down a street. So that's one way of doing things. Another way of doing things is by playing into my four-track tape recorder, which I've got usually set up and ready to go. And I'll play bits of tunage or a groove, which is just a couple of bars of a tune over and over again. And I'll listen to what I've done and I'll pick out the good bits and write them out and go back and play the good bits and improvise some more over those. And even when my tunes get, get a little, little more abstract and a little, little more introspective or, or just acquire different influences, they, there's still that toe-tapping quality to them and that, that real ha happy, uplifting quality to them. I'll put the phones on you. Is that okay? Put them up higher. Up higher? Like that? Okay. okay. Susie is a great cool. natural music producer. She's got really great ideas about songs and what works. So when I was recording my album, I would play things for her. And she would say, no, the mix is wrong. Or she would go, why don't you try, uh, you know, an airplane siren on this thing or, or some really crazy idea, but, but it would always be a good idea. Just being surrounded by her art and look at all these things around me and, and it just begins to set my, set my wheels going. Oliver's music is something like a portrait. It's a portrait of different people's cultures in a musical form, I think. Irish music is full of tunes like the humors of Listu and Varna and the humors of this and that and the other. And I studied philosophy, so I wrote the humors of Plato and then the humors of Aristotle. And uh, this is a really whacked out little tune. This gets really away from Celtic music here. philosophy there and um, talked about Mongolian music yeah it's one of my favorite things to listen to these days and I wrote a little Mongolian tune Mongolian Scottish kind of tune I couldn't quite decide which it was but it sounded like bagpipes played on the steps and I ended up calling it Jingus Dreams and I'll play a little bit of that that's it's something else altogether again So I think me and both me and Oliver employ humor in our work, whether intentionally or not. It just seems to come out that way. Uh, this piece here is called I Enjoy Being a Girl, based on an old Broadway musical, Flower Drum Song. And this is everything a girl should want. It's um, you got your beauty, you got your babies, and you got your boobs. And you're all in a handy carrying case, all lit up. And uh, so that's what this thing is about. What Susie loves doing is she loves playing the fiddle. I mean, she almost, she loves it just about more than anybody I know. And um, when she plays a fiddle tune, she always looks like a dog who's got a hole of a bone. It's like, I'm going to play this thing. And uh, so if we sit down and play for a couple of hours, Susie comes away from the whole thing, I think. And then, she, then she's inspired, and then she'll go and paint. And then I have to just stay out of the way, because then you know she has to get into her own space. He's playing all the hard stuff. I'm cranking away in the background, and I get this great major satisfaction that I'm, I'm making music with somebody. 
It's so different than painting. It's so immediate. It's right there. It's happening right there. And, um, well, it's really an abstract thing. It's hard to explain why it's so great. It's just totally great. It's, I live for those times. I really do. Yeah. <laughs> we were so captivated by the music that we asked Oliver to play more for us. One of the tunes he selected was Stewed Tomatoes.